Welcome to today's presentation. My name is Kathy Roby, and I will be presenting GG, a summary of the guidance changes. First, let me introduce myself. I've spent the majority of my career working with home health and hospice providers. I've been in the field, been a clinical educator, and been a clinical manager. For the last 15 years, I've provided consulting support to home health and hospice providers, assisting in improving quality and outcomes. Currently, I'm a consultant working with Econometrica for this education process. In today's presentation, we will be reviewing the updates to section GG0130 self-care and 170 mobility. Let's begin by reviewing GG0100 prior functioning and GG0110 prior device. This is a screenshot of that slide of that section. Uh, note that the wording here has been updated to be gender neutral. On the right-hand side, the wording changes were made for clarity, removing or replacing it with and. As we proceed through our review of this section of the OASIS, please pay close attention to the words that are in blue typeface. These are the changes we will look at in depth in each item. In the coding instructions, please note how the use of any words such as any or all will affect the way you answer the item. Code three independent has not changed other than to add the word all so that it reads if the patient completed all the activities. Code two needed some help indicates that the patient needed partial assistance to complete any of the activities. Code two, code one dependent if the completed helper completed all the activities or the assistance of two or more helpers was required. Code eight unknown if the patient's usual ability is unknown and not applicable if the activities were not applicable to this patient prior to their current illness, exacerbation or injury. On this slide, we have three coding tips to guide you as you fill in your responses. For GG0100 prior functioning, we report the patient's functional ability prior to the onset of the current situation. Note also completing the STAIR activity for 0100C. The stairs indicate the patient went up and down the stairs by any safe means, whether without handrails or assistive devices, or equipment such as cane, crutch, walker, or stair lift. By any safe means also may include the patient scooting up and down stairs on their buttocks. Note going up and down a ramp is not considered going up or down stairs. Here we have a screenshot of 0110, prior device use. Again, we are looking at what the patient may have used prior to their current situation. The gray box definition tells you to indicate the devices and aids used by the patient prior to the current illness. Note that there are no canes listed here. You would code that under Z, none of the above. Here we are again looking at what devices did the patient use. These three tips will help you in coding correctly. For 0110C, report the devices used by the patient prior to the onset of the current illness, exacerbation, or injury. For the response categories in 0110, i.e. mechanical lift, orthotic, prosthetic, CMS does not provide an exhaustive list of assistive devices. Note the devices may have been used indoors or outdoors. 0110 prior device use, these are some basic instructions for how to go about coding. Again, note the blue typeface changes. Mechanical lift includes any mechanical device or equipment patient or caregiver requires for lifting or supporting the patient's body weight. Examples include, but are not limited to, stair, hoyer, bathtub, sit to stand lift, stand assist, electronic recliner, and full body style lifts if required. Use your clinical judgment to determine whether other devices meet the mechanical lift definition provided. Walker refers to all types of walkers. Examples include, but are not limited to, pickup walkers, hemi walkers, rolling and platform walkers. Code Z, none of the above, 
if the patient did not use any of these listed devices. A dash is a valid response for this item. A dash indicates no information. CMS expects that this will be a rare occurrence. Let's move on to this section where we will summarize the basic guidance and approaches used to complete section GG self-care and mobility items. <clears throat> In this section, we look at the changes that have been made to 130 and 170. The item intent has been clarified. Response specific instructions have been refined in general assistive devices, SOC and ROC performance, SOC and ROC discharge goals, follow up and discharge performance. There are new and revised definitions. Your coding instructions are clarified and some item specific coding tips have been added. Self care is assessed at SOC ROC follow up and a discharge. Remember that you are addressing two separate aspects here at SOC Rock. First, the functional status or performance level, and then establishing the discharge goal for each item. This is a screenshot. I know it may be a little difficult to read this small print. Note again, follow up and discharge versions of this item are slightly different to allow for the collection of follow up and discharge performances. Here we are looking at 0170 mobility or the ability to perform certain specific tasks that are the basis for that activity. Again, for SOC ROC, based on the specific definitions for each code, you are first entering your assessment at SOC ROC, then establishing the goal for discharge. Note, follow-up and discharge versions of this item are again slightly different to allow for the collection of the follow-up and discharge performances. Here, we are looking at a revised response. Licensed clinicians may assess the patient's self-care and mobility performance based on direct observation, the preferred route, patient or caregiver report, the assessment of similar activities or collaboration with other agency staff who've had direct contact with the patient or some other means of gathering the information. As you are observing an activity, remember to choose your words carefully so you do not provide verbal cueing for the activity. The example given here is the difference between asking if the patient can stand up from the seat versus saying, push down on the grab bar. Suggesting the patient push down on the grab bar is cueing. Remember, the assessing clinician may need to use the clinical judgment to determine the most appropriate code. Here, we have a slightly specific expanded direction on how to complete the self-care and mobility assessment. If the patient only completes a portion of the activity, performs a partial bath or transfers into but not out of the vehicle and does not complete the entire activity during the assessment timeframe. Use clinical judgment to determine whether the situation allows you to adequately assess the patient's ability to complete the activity. When a GG function ability is not completed entirely during one clinical observation, i.e. a patient transfers bed to chair in the morning, and transfers chair to bed at night. Code based on the type and amount of assistance required to complete the entire activity. A clinician who's observed the patient completing part of the task can evaluate that portion of the activity and from it, determine how to code the response using their clinical judgment to determine that yes, they have adequate information or no, they do not to fully code the query. Please see page 130 of your guidance document for further detail. What is the time frame for these assessments that we keep referring to? Let's consider the definitions of these two aspects of the assessment. The time period under consideration is the look back that you use when coding each item. For most items, the look back period is the day of assessment. For other items, the look back period is different, such as in the last 14 days or at the time of or since the most recent SOC rock. The day of assessment 
is the 24 hours that immediately precedes the assessment and the time spent by the clinician conducting the assessment. Again, we need to always consider which look back period we are using as we code the assessment items. Another way to absorb this concept for the day of assessment is to imagine that your assessment is a Polaroid photo of the patient's self-care and mobility level at the time of the start of care, where the look back period that is other, such as the last 14 days or the time since the most sock rock is a video because it shows the progression. Page 132 of the guidance document provides you a table listing of the look back periods for each type of assessment. The guidance for completing these assessments has been further expanded to assist you in this process. These clarifications here are new. When using patient or caregiver reports, it's expected the patient and caregivers are reporting on the patient's status within the time period under consideration. For 130 and 170, the assessing clinician would code each activity based on the type and amount of assistance needed to complete the activity safely, not based on the availability of that assistance. Assessment of self-care and mobility items is based on their ability to complete the activity with or without assistance and with or without a device. If the activity is not routinely done, such as the use of stairs for a person living in a one floor setting, the clinician will need to use their clinical judgment to answer this question. This portion of the guidance has been revised to clarify the impact of the use of new or previously used devices. Activities may com be completed with or without an assistive device. This includes new or previously utilized devices or equipment. Use of a device or equipment may result in the patient needing less assistance from a helper. The patient may be assessed based on the first use of an assistive device or equipment that has not been previously used. You code based on the type and amount of assistance required prior to the benefit of services provided by your agency staff. What is meant by this term prior to benefit of service? CMS defines this as prior to the provision of any care by your agency staff that would result in more independent coding. Introducing a new device should not automatically be considered as providing a service. Whether a device used during the assessment is new to the patient or not, Use clinical judgment to code based on the type and amount of assistance that is required for the patient to complete the activity prior to the benefit of services by your staff. CMS does not provide an exhaustive list of devices that may be used when coding self-care and mobility performance. Sock rock performances at Sock Rock the self-care or mobility performance code is to reflect the patient's baseline ability to complete the activity prior to the benefit of services from your staff. For example, during the sock rock assessment, the clinician notes that getting onto or off of the stair lift required standby assist and codes accordingly. The clinician then provides the instruction to the patient, resulting in a safer, totally independent use of the stair lift. Coding of stairs must still reflect the standby assist that was required prior to the instruction provided by your staff. Let's look now at coding the discharge goals. Agencies are required to complete a discharge goal for a minimum of one of the following self-care or mobility items. In the green box are three GG0130 items, A, B, and C, and nine GG0170 items. The instructions are to indicate a discharge goal for a minimum of one of these items. Once a discharge goal is established, there is no need to update it if circumstances change or additional information becomes available either within or after the SOC ROC assessment timeframe.
what does the patient's usual performance mean to scoring these items? If the patient's functional status varies during the look back period, record their usual ability to perform each activity. For 130 and 170, a patient's usual performance is their ability greater than 50% of the time during the look back period. Remember, the look back may vary for different OASIS tools and the guidance manual has a chart listing these look back periods for each OASIS. The definitions of each of these codes for these two items have been clarified. Note the blue typeface in 06. 06 independent if the patient completes the activity by themselves with no assistance from the helper. 05 setup or cleanup refers to the helper sets up or cleans up and the patient completes the activity independently. Defining code four supervision or touching assistance is often difficult. Code four supervision or touching assistance. If the helper provides verbal cues and or touching and steadying and or contact guard assistance, as the patient completes the activity. Assistance may be provided during the activity or only intermittently. You would use O4 if a single helper is required to manage oxygen tank or tubing or provide steadying assistance. Use O4 if the single helper manages the tank or IV pole and the patient otherwise needs no further assistance. Use supervision or assistance if the patient only required verbal cueing. Selecting between codes two and three requires determining the amount of physical assistance beyond supervision or cueing is required. In O3, partial or moderate, the helper does less than half the effort. The helper lifts, holds, or supports the trunk or limbs, providing less than half the effort. O2, substantial or maximal, is if the helper does more than half the effort, lifting or holding trunk or limbs with more than half the effort to complete the activity. Code one refers to the patient who is unable to put forth any of the effort. If the helper does all of the effort, the patient does none of the effort to complete the activity or the assistance of two or more helpers is required for the patient to complete this activity. Code one dependent, if two are required for safe completion, even if the second helper provides supervision standby only and does not need to provide any hands-on. Code dependent, if the patient requires the assistance of two to complete the activity, one to provide support to the patient and the second to manage the equipment. What happens if the task is not completed or even attempted? The use of an activity not attempted code 07, 09, 10, or 88 should occur only after determining that an activity has not been completed and the performance code cannot be determined based on patient caregiver report, collaboration with other staff, or assessment of similar activities. Here, each of the activity attempted codes is defined for us. Remember, CMS will expect the use of the dash to be a rare occurrence. Code 07, if the patient refused, refusing to complete the activity and no other code is applicable. Code 09, not applicable, if the patient did not attempt to perform the activity and did not perform this activity prior to the current situation. Code 10, not attempted due to environmental limitations. If the patient did not attempt this activity due to, for example, the lack of equipment or weather constraints. Code 88, not attempted due to medical condition or safety. If the concern, if the activity was not attempted due to medical condition or safety concerns, and the activity was completed prior to the current illness or exacerbation or injury. As we've gone through the previous slides, we've discussed and described each of the codes for answering the self-care and mobility questions. As adult learners, we each learn and understand things differently. 
Here, we've outlined the codes to answer these queries in a decision tree format. I find this format very helpful because it allows you to visualize as you move through the tree. This decision tree may be used to assist with coding the patient's self-care and mobility performance. Use of an activity not attempted code should occur only after determining the code is not completed and the performance code cannot be determined based on patient caregiver report, collaboration with other staff or assessment of similar activities. Now that we have established ourselves a strong foundation in the codes and how to use them to answer the queries, let's take a look at the guidance specifically for GG0130. One thirty A looks at eating. Eating is the ability to use suitable utensils to bring food and or liquid to the mouth and swallow food or liquid once the meal is placed before the patient. If the patient requires assistance, supervision or cueing to swallow safely, code based on the type and amount of assistance required for feeding and safe swallowing. If the patient swallows safely, exclude swallowing from consideration when coding. If the patient eats finger foods with their hands, code 130A, eating based upon the type and amount of assistance required. If the patient eats independently, they would be coded as 06 independent. Oral hygiene is the ability to use suitable items to clean the teeth. the ability to insert and remove dentures to and from the mouth and manage denture soaking and rinsing with the use of equipment. As clinicians, we need to also consider the patient who has no teeth. For the patient who is edentulous, code oral hygiene based on the type and amount of assistance needed from the helper to clean the patient's gums. Toileting hygiene is the ability to maintain perineal hygiene to just close before and after voiding or having a bowel movement. If managing an ostomy, include wiping the opening, but not managing the equipment. Toileting hygiene includes performing the perineal hygiene and managing clothing, undergarments, incontinence briefs, and pants before and after voiding or having a bowel movement. The toileting activity can be assessed and coded regardless of the patient's need to use to void or have a bowel movement at that time. When a patient requires different levels of assistance in performing toileting hygiene after voiding versus after the bowel movement, code based on the type and assistance required to complete the entire activity. Toileting hygiene, managing the clothing and perineal cleansing takes place before and after the use of the toilet commode, bedpan, or urinal. For some patients, this may include assessing the type and amount of assistance needed to complete the management and hygiene tasks after an episode of incontinence. If the patient completes a bowel toileting regimen in bed, code the toileting hygiene item based on their need for assistance in managing their clothing and perineal cleansing. In 130C, we are asked to consider the impact of indwelling catheters and ostomies. If a patient has an indwelling catheter, toileting hygiene includes perineal hygiene to the indwelling catheter site, but not management of the equipment. If the patient has an indwelling urinary catheter and has bowel movements, code the toileting item based on the type and amount of assistance needed when moving their bowels. This may necessarily include the need to again perform perineal hygiene to the indwelling catheter site. If the patient manages the ostomy, toileting hygiene includes wiping the opening, but not management of the equipment. Shower and bathe self is the ability to bathe self, including washing, rinsing, and drying, excluding the back and the hair. It does not include the transferring in and out of the tub or shower. Shower and bathe self includes the ability to wash, rinse, and dry the face, upper and lower body, perineal area, and feet 
regardless of where the bathing takes place. Do not include the following. Washing, rinsing, drying the patient's back or hair, transferring in or out of the tub shower or tub bench. Assessing 130E can take place in any location, including shower or bathtub at a sink or in bed for a full body sponge bath. The bathing can be assessed with the patient sitting on a tub bench. How do we code completing the activity of bathing? If the patient cannot bathe their entire body, then code 130E based on the type and amount of assistance needed to complete it. Use clinical judgment to determine whether completing a partial bath or simulating it allows you to adequately assess the patient's ability. If the clinician determines this observation is adequate, code based on the type and amount of assistance required. If the patient cannot complete the activity, remember to use your clinical judgment to code correctly. If the patient cannot bathe their entire ability based because of a medical condition such as a cast or non-removable dressing, code the activity based on the type and amount of assistance needed to complete it. When would you select 05, set up and assistance for 130E? The patient can complete the bathing tasks only after the helper retrieves and sets up the supplies. The only help the patient requires is assistance before or after the activity to cover wounds or devices for water protection during bathing. For 130F, 130G, 130H, upper and lower body dressing and footwear. If the patient dresses and undresses themselves and the only help they require is for retrieve or put away clothing before or after the activity, code 05. When donning and doffing a supportive elastic bandage, compression stocking, orthosis or prosthesis, count these items as a piece of clothing when determining the amount of assistance the patient needs to complete this dressing activity. Coding should consider all dressing items relative to the patient, regardless of the timing when each item is put on or taken off. Example, if the patient dresses in the morning, puts on the prosthetic later in the day, and undresses in the evening, code based on the type and amount of assistance required to complete the entire activity, even if the portions incur at a different time of the day. There is new clarification regarding the upper and lower body dressing and footwear. Upper and lower, upper body and lower body dressing and footwear include dressing and undressing and clothing and footwear routinely worn by the patient. The clinician will need to determine which clothes should be considered routine. If the patient modifies the clothing they wear due to a physical impairment, the modified clothing selection will be considered routine if there is no reasonable expectation that the patient could return to their previous style of dressing. There is no specified time period at which the modified clothing style will become the routine clothing. Upper body dressing is the ability to dress and undress above the waist, including fasteners if applicable. These bullets provide a listing of the dressing items and other items that are to be considered as coding. You will code these based on the amount and type of assistance that is needed to complete the entire dressing activity. Lower body dressing is the ability to dress and undress below the waist, including the fasteners, and does not include footwear. Here we have a list again of the clothing items for lower body dressing and the orthotics that are considered to be included. Note that this does include knee brace, elastic bandage, a stump shrinker, and an above or below the knee prosthetic. 130H specifically addresses donning and doffing of the footwear. Separating this task from lower body dressing because these items will don and doff over the foot itself. Putting on and taking off of footwear is the ability to put on and take off socks and shoes or other footwear 
that is appropriate for safe mobility. There is a lengthy list here, but it is not exclusive. There may be some orthotics that are not here on this list. Note also that an AFO is considered a footwear and some socks are, that are required for mobility may also be included here. Note that while some types of clothing, wraps, or supportive devices may cover both the lower leg, lower body, and the foot, the patient's ability to, to put them on and take them off should not be considered for both 130G lower body dressing and 130H footwear. In order to assist in determining which activity this would, the or clothing, wrap, orthotic, or prosthetic would apply to, Consider items that cover all or part of the foot, even if they extend up the leg like a sock or AFO, as footwear. If the patient is a bilateral lower extremity amputee, coding 130H may or may not apply. Code 88 is used for when the patient did perform the task prior to the current illness, but it is not done during sock rock. Code 09, if the activity was not done because of bilateral amputations prior to the illness and therefore was not done at SOC Rock. For patients with a single lower extremity amputation, these coding tips should help. If the activity of putting on and taking off footwear occurs for the intact limb only, code based according to the type and amount of assistance needed to complete the activity for the one remaining limb. If the activity occurs for both intact limb and prosthetic limb, code based on the type and amount of assistance needed to complete the activity for both. Having addressed the self-care issues, let us move on now to GG0170 mobility. Before beginning the bed mobility assessments, the clinician must first determine if the head of the bed can be lowered sufficiently to assess these questions. If not, select an appropriate, not attempted code. If the activity <clears throat> rolling left to right is defined as lying on the back to the left and rolling to the left, going back to the back and then rolling to the right. If the patient does not normally sleep in a bed, you must assess this activity while the patient is in a lying position on their usual sleep surface. This may be a couch or a recliner or a lift chair, but it must be done on the preferred or necessary sleep surface. Sit to lie is the ability to move from sitting on the side of the bed to lying flat on the bed. Again, if the patient's usual sleeping surface is other than the bed, this assessment must be done on that sleep surface. In 170C, lying to sitting on the side of the bed, the ability to move from lying on the back to sitting on the side of the bed with no back support is being assessed. Again, it must be done on the sleep surface the patient normally uses. Here in the definition, the patient must be sitting on the side of the bed with no back support to code as independent. The reference to the patient having their feet flat on the floor has now been removed from 170C in the OASIS E instrument. Sit to stand is the ability to come to a standing position from sitting in a chair, a wheelchair, or on the side of the bed. If the mechanical lift is used to assist in transferring a patient for chair bed to chair, and even with assistance, the patient's not able to complete the sit to stand activity, code 170D with the appropriate activity not attempted code. If a sit to stand lift is used, but the patient requires the assistance of two helpers, code as O1 dependent. 170E, chair bed to chair transfer, is 
defined as the ability to transfer to and from a bed to a chair or wheelchair. This activity reflects the transfer to and from any two sitting surfaces. Depending on the patient's abilities, the transfer may be stand pivot, squat pivot, or sliding board transfer. When possible, the transfer should be assessed in an environmental situation where taking more than a few steps is not necessary to complete this transfer. Here we have an additional item to assist in coding this particular function. When the GG activity is not completed entirely during one clinical observation, you may code based on the type and amount of assistance required to complete the entire activity. In addition to direct observation, coding can be determined based on patient caregiver report, collaboration with other staff, or assessment of similar activities. 170F addresses toilet transfer which is the ability to get on and off a toilet or commode. These three coding tips will further define what exactly is included in this activity. It's important to note the difference between this item, the toilet transfer, and 130B, toileting hygiene. Toilet transfer is the ability to get on and off a toilet with or without a raised seat or a commode. Toileting hygiene, Getting to and from the toilet, clothing management are not considered part of the transfer activity. The toilet transfer activity can be assessed and coded regardless of the patient's need to use the toilet or commode to avoid or have a bowel movement at the time of the assessment. Consider these two additional coding tips. Like many other activities addressed in Oasis E, the clinician must choose their words carefully. Communicating the activity request, can you stand up from the toilet, would not be considered verbal cueing. If you use additional prompts, such as push down on the grab bar, the clinician may need to use their judgment to determine the most appropriate code using the activity's decision tree. With setup or cleanup assistance, if the patient requires the helper to position or set up the commode before and after the transfer, you would need to code according to the amount of assistance. 170G is focused on a very narrow definition. The car transfer is the ability to transfer in and out of the car or van on the passenger side only. This does not include the ability to open and close the door of the vehicle or fasten and unfasten the seat belt. In doing this assessment, the patient can be assessed using any type of vehicle and the clinician must look only at the getting in and out process, not opening the door and not locking or unlocking the seat belt. If a wheelchair transport vehicle is used, code not attempted. The use of the device to get to and from the car is a setup activity and is not considered when coding the activity of getting into and out of the car. Clinicians may use their professional judgment to determine whether observing a patient performing a portion of the car transfer activity, such as getting in, allows you to adequately assess their ability to both get in and out. If you determine the observation is adequate, code based on the type and amount of assistance required to complete it. Use an activity not attempted code. If you determine that the car transfer activity is not completed and a performance code cannot be determined based on caregiver, patient or caregiver report, collaboration with staff or assessment of similar activities. There are four walking items in this section. The following guidance applies to 170I, walk 10 feet, 170J, walk 50 feet with two turns, 170K, walk 150 feet, and 170L, walk 10 feet on uneven surfaces. Remember, a cane is not considered an assistive device and a standing brief rest is allowed. If a sitting rest is needed, you must code as patient cannot complete 
the activity itself. Assessment of walking starts with the patient in a standing position. Use of an assistive device or equipment to complete the activity should not automatically result in reporting a more dependent code. Walking activities cannot be completed without some level of patient participation that allows the patient to occur, ambulate for the entire stated distance. The helper cannot complete the walking activity for a patient. Again, remember a brief standing rest is allowed, a sitting rest is not. These additional coding tips apply to all four walking items. The following guidance applies to 170 I, J, K, and L. Report an appropriate activity not attempted code when the patient requires a seated rest break and or cannot complete the activity without the assistance of one or more helpers. You may use your clinical judgment to determine how the actual patient assessment of walking is conducted. The clinician may choose to combine the assessment of multiple walking activities and use their judgment to determine the type and amount of assistance needed for each activity. 170J is testing the patient's ability to maintain balance and gait while making turns. The turns included in 170J are 90 degree turns, may occur at any time during the 50 foot walk, may be in the same direction, two 90 degree turns to the right or to the left, they may be one in each of two different directions, and the 90 degree turn should occur at the patient's ability level and may include the use of an assistive device. 170L is testing the patient's ability to walk on an uneven surface. Walking 10 feet on uneven surfaces is the ability to walk on turf or gravel. There are three step and stair tasks. This guidance applies to 170M, one step such as a curb, 170N, four steps, and 170O, 12 steps, which is usually equal to one flight. Completing the stair activities indicates that the patient goes up and down the stairs by any safe means with or without any devices. Getting to and from the stairs is not included when coding this activity. Going up and down stairs by any safe means includes walking up and down on their feet or bumping and scooting up and down on their butt. Ascending and descending stairs does not have to occur sequentially or during one session. If the assessment occurs sequentially, the patient may take a standing or seated rest break between ascending and descending the four or 12 steps. If the patient uses a wheelchair normally, can they do the curb or one stair at all? A patient who is a wheelchair user may be assessed going up and down stairs, including one step or curb, in the wheelchair. Code based on the type and amount of assistance the patient required from the helper. If the patient goes up and down stairs by any safe means, with or without an assistive device and with no setup assistance, verbal or physical assistance, code 06 independent. If they require a helper to provide total assist, code 01 dependent. 170M refers to the ability to go up or down a curb, up or down one step. If their discharge performance has been coded as 07, 09, 10, or 88, skip over this to 170P, picking up an object. Assess the patient going up and down one step or up and down a curb. If both are assessed and the patient's performing going up and down the curb is different than going up and down one stair, perhaps because the step has a railing, Code 170M based on the activity with which they required the most insistence. 12 steps is the ability to go up and down 12 steps with or without the rail. Are there 12 steps available in the setting for this patient? If not, the clinician may use an alternative such as doing four steps three times in a safe manner. This is acceptable to meet the intent of the activity. 
170P considers that the patient can retrieve a small object from the floor. This is the ability to bend or stoop from standing to pick up a small object, such as a spoon, from the floor. Picking up the object must be assessed while the patient is in a standing position. If the patient is not able to stand, the activity did not occur and the appropriate not attempted code must be used. If a standing patient is unable to pick up a small object from the floor, requiring the helper to pick up the object, code one, two, or three, depending on whether the helper provided all, more than half or less than half of the effort. And again, clinicians should use their, their judgment to apply the guidance regarding the patient's degree of participation in picking up that object. In addressing wheelchair mobility, we are looking at the abilities of the patient to use their appliance under any circumstance. This applies to each of the wheelchair and or scooter items. Q, does the patient use the wheelchair and or scooter? R, can they wheel 50 feet with two turns? 170 RR is to indicate the type of wheelchair or scooter. 170 S is 150 feet and 170 SS is the type of wheelchair or scooter used. This small box is a screenshot of this query. This includes patients are learning, who are learning how to self-mobilize using a wheelchair or scooter, those who require assistance from a helper to mobilize, and those who require a helper to push them in the wheelchair. If you code only zero no, if at the time of the assessment, the patient does not use a wheelchair or scooter under any condition, you may then skip all of the remaining wheelchair questions. Code one, yes, if the patient uses a wheelchair and or a scooter. It's important to remember that your responses to these queries may, choose, may change from sock to discharge. How would the item be affected? The responses for the gateway wheelchair item, 170I, QI and 170Q3, might not be the same on admission and discharge assessments. For example, at start of care, the patient may never have used a wheelchair before and is currently not using one under any condition. 170Q is then coded no. During the episode, the patient begins instruction in wheelchair use. At discharge, the patient is now able to mobilize the manual chair for short distances. Thus, discharge is coded as one, yes. There are four wheelchair items. Clinicians can use their clinical judgment to determine how the actual patient assessment of wheelchair mobility is conducted. If the clinician chooses to combine the assessment of multiple wheelchair activities, use your judgment to determine the type and amount of assistance needed for each individual activity. A helper can assist the patient to complete the wheelchair distance or make turns if required. When a patient is unable to wheel the entire distance themselves, the activity can still be completed and a performance code established based on the type and amount of assistance required from the helper to complete this activity. GG170R and 170RR address two issues the ability to make two turns in the wheelchair and the type of device used, manual or motorized wheelchair scooter. The small boxes show the item as you will see it in the OASIS tool. The turns included in the item 170R, wheels 50 feet with two turns, are 90 degree turns, may occur at any time during the 50 foot distance, may both be in the same direction or may be one each in two different directions. The 90 degree turn should occur at the person's ability level. What if the patient owns and uses both types of wheelchair or scooter? If at the time of the assessment, the patient uses both manual or motorized wheelchair or scooter to complete the wheel 50 feet with two turns activity, code the activity based on the type of wheelchair scooter which the patient requires the most assistance. If at the time of assessment, the patient uses both a manual and motorized wheelchair to complete the wheel 150 feet distance, code the activity based on the type of wheelchair or scooter with which the patient needs the most assistance. As we have reviewed the items in the GG sections, 
We have focused on the revisions and the changes in the guidance for answering these queries. As you go back through these slides to review the changes and the additions to the items, we urge you to have the guidance document open at hand to reinforce your learning. We've covered a lot of information in this session, so you may find you have questions about the content. If you would like to submit a question regarding this presentation, please send it to packtraining at econometricainc.com by August 31st, 2022. As a reminder, a practice coding workshop will be held in September. We encourage you to attend. Selected questions will be answered in a Q&A session during the September 2022 virtual live event. Thank you for reviewing this presentation. We look forward to your attendance at the coding workshop.